Hello everyone, welcome to Minecraft Computers Explained, Episode 4. And for those of you new to this series, this is a series that's mostly designed to go along with my Building Minecraft Computer Tutorial series, and any videos number on side that I reference will be referencing videos in that series, not this series. And that's about everything, so... If also, is, yeah, this is an independent series, so you don't need to worry about seeing that series if you want to just follow along with this series. This series is mostly about explaining how things work as opposed to how to build them. So, without further ado, welcome to video four. And this video is about um, program memory, programming, and turning things on and off, and all that sort of stuff. So, right now, now in video 15, we finished the computer, we built this output display, and we set our computer up to do um, addition. So right now I have numbers 1 and 7 in my user inputs, and I'm going to go ahead and do addition. This is our general indicator. Right now it's programmed to give, to turn on when it first loads the program, and also to turn on when it has finished processing. So, with all that background out of the way, let's just see the program we set up. And it's loaded the program. So now it's processing, and now it gets us our answer, which is 8. Ta-da! So that's the basis of how this whole thing works. And you're like, all that to do addition? Yeah, not exactly, but that's okay. So, let's start talking. In the last couple of videos in this series, we've had this really big system of analogies of how everything related to something in the city. And, you know, this really gets, it really starts going on for a really long time. So, I mean, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. What I meant to say is this particular part is complicated and I'm, I could go on a really long time about this because this thing is Again, it's complicated. It's there's a lot to it, but so let's start an analogy land. Right now, we're going to talk about program memory for right now, and this is our program memory that we set up in a couple of videos ago. And you know, just because I'm going to go ahead and unload the program, so there now it's unloaded the program, and it there we go. So we've talked about how everything was like something, and I'll just go ahead and briefly go back over that. We talked about busing. Well, buses are like real buses. Information travels along the bus, has a couple of bus stops, and information can get off at any bus stop that you tell it to. And then from the bus stop, you can get on to other buses, and you can ride those buses to somewhere else. And that's how information gets around the computer. It can also get around in re to registers, and registers are like taxis because, well, Registers are always going to one specific location, like in this case we have registers for the AOU. So if we want, we can just send information directly to the AOU, because, hey, sometimes you don't want to get on the bus system, sometimes you know, hey, I want to go to the AOU, that's that's where I work, it's my job. It, so, it can go to the AOU. That's the idea of registers. In a really general sense, registers are actually a little bit more complicated than that, but for this purpose, that is what they do. We had uh, read-only memory, which was like the old ladies at the bus stop. No idea how on earth they got there. They're just there. Eh. And we now had, um, I think it was, oh yeah, we also had decoders for like phone books, because you could look up things and call them and say, hey, why aren't you doing anything? Better go do something or I'm going to kick your ass. And basically that stuff. And hopefully not as aggressively, but yeah. It lets you look up locations so that you don't have to individually worry about knowing where everything in the computer is. And that brings us to program memory. Program memory is one of, it's a read-only type of memory. It is one of the largest memory systems in the entire computer. Well, at least this type of read-only memory. Some real computers, most true computers have um, writable program memory. But they have extremely limited access to it, but anyways. So what is program memory like in this big analogy city? Well, program memory is like your boss. 
basically it just sits there and says, hey, this is what I want you to do. Do it. This is what I want you to do. Do it. Then a few seconds later, it's like, hey, now I want you to do this instead. Uh, and it can just tell you to do that no matter or whether or not you finished with what they just told you to do or not. Then it's just like, hey, now I want you to do this instead. Now I want you to do this instead. And the boss, and it's your job to just try to keep up with your boss or you get fired. And in this case, the boss doesn't fire you. The user get, fires you because he notices, hey, you didn't manage to complete something. Now I'm going to blow you up. And he plays a bunch of TNT all over the place and you get blown up and, well, bad times. So, that's what program memory is like. Now, if you happen to be in the position where you're programming your computer, and hopefully at least someone is, or else, well, the computer doesn't do anything, it's completely useless. So if you're in that position, then, well, hmm, how should I say this? Well, if you're in the position where you're the programmer, you have to tell the boss what he says to it, because the boss doesn't know what he's supposed to do. And that's where you get these little torches on the side. And it might seem weird right now, but this is actually binary. If there's a torch above the wire, that's a 1. If there's no torch above the wire, that's a 0. So we've just written a program in binary for the computer right here. And the boss takes that binary information says, Oh, I know how this works, and sends it off to the... um. To the uh, computer and, t and tells it, hey, do it, do it, do it. No, 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 no. Now do this, do this. No, no, now do this. And uh, he's really hectic, and the worker gets pissed off, and it's amazing that he doesn't quit. But interesting enough, the boss can also tell himself to do things, <laughs> which gets a little interesting. And that's what the do go to command does. That's the reason we have this thing, the clock. Basically, the clock is just a pulse, and in our silly analogy. The clock is when the boss decides to do, do this test. Because let's be in reality. Let's just face reality. Your boss, he doesn't just do th ing things like as soon as he gets them. He just like waits, goes reads the newspaper, watches the Super Bowl, oh, just chills out, and then finally he's like, ah, all right, I better do this. So that's what the clock does. It tells the boss when he feels like doing things. And interestingly enough, he has a very distinct pattern to when he feels like doing things. So, um, that's mostly what we've added, except we've added another decoder. So, with that, let's go into the, um, I guess you could just call it the convert of the explanation, the more technical side of things. And Bleed Rounds is probably going to be one of the shorter explanation videos, because program memory, I mean, it's, it's not that complicated, it's just really hard to explain it until it's done. So basically... This whole thing over here, this is more of a processor. And it does have RAM hooked up to it. For the most part, it's a processor. I'd say, like, this section and back is the processor. And, the, as you hopefully know, processors can take informational commands. Like, so basically we have all these inputs, and that's where we're taking commands. If you've ever seen a real processor, you know it says all those pins on the bottom. Yeah, these are the pins. Basically, depending on how you send power to it, the processor will react in a certain way. That's what these signs tell us. It tells us how the processor is going to react to send effing power sent to certain commands. And so, so that's basically what's actually doing all the computer eating the processor. We have a fairly fast processor in this. It's not incredibly fast, but it's mostly living up to the standard 12 tick processing. 12, 13 tick processing, that's usually the standard for Minecraft computers that I found. Most Minecraft computers will run on a clock of at least that speed, so yeah, it's it's living up to standards. That's the good thing. And, yeah. And, and that's what, and when you're reading from the memory, when the boss is giving the commands, the processor's just doing them. So, and that's Essentially, the way this works, the boss doesn't know what the processor is doing because the processor it doesn't turn in any of the player reports, but the processor does because that's what the processor is supposed to do. It's supposed to process stuff, and that's um, that's basically how this works. It's actually not that complicated. Each of these elect electrical pins gives the processor its own a different command and acts based on that command. And the boss gets a command. You I do that by programming it, and 